As you watch Solo Leveling this first season, you're going to meet more than one hunter in the series, but given the power system of Solo Leveling and the very insane world building that's so intricate, you're probably going to have some questions as the story moves along, which is why in today's video, I want to cover everything you need to know about hunters and Solo Leveling, including all the different types of hunters from the main types to the subcategories of hunters and clear up some of the more common questions about this aspect of the world building that I see people still a little confused confused about following the first episode. So let's start with what exactly hunters are in the solo leveling world and what makes them different from other humans in the series. Hunters are special humans because they are humans who are born with the ability to use magic and that allows them to be the ones best suited to go off to battle and kill magic beasts, which are magic monsters who stay inside of dungeons and a majority of them are extremely hostile towards human. And despite them looking like mindless brutes, they're able to forge their own gear. And in a lot of cases, they're just as intelligent as humans with some of them even being able to speak the human language. So for that reason, only hunters are allowed to directly engage with them in battle. Hunters first showed up in this world around the time that humanity first got exposed to all things magic in this world. It was then that the hunters were revealed to be the only people who could kill the magic beast and close the gates. This in turn resulted in the billion dollar industry being produced as a result of this. And like you would expect with anything when it comes to involving money, things get a little more complicated to say the least. Hunters are broken down into a ranking system that is very easy to understand. It's an international system that ranks all the way from S rank, which is the highest ranking, all the way to E rank, which is the lowest ranking. The system is set in place to show how strong each hunter is and how skilled they are in terms of their abilities. Hunters are then broken down even further into two main categories that every hunter falls into, which are combat types and non-combat types. However, as you would expect, even amongst those two categories, things break down even further, much like you would expect. Think of it like basketball players in the NBA. They might be an offensive player, but they're a specialist like three-point specialists or ball handling specialists or passing specialists. The same is true with hunters who are categorized as combat types and non-combat type hunters. For instance, there are six different types of hunters who fall into those two categories. You have fighters, assassins, tankers, mages, rangers, and healers. Generally speaking, speaking, you can split it down the middle when it comes to these six, with three either being combat or non-combat types, though depending on the user, some of these types they can dabble in the middle for both offensive and defensive purposes. A great example of this would actually be mages, but we'll touch on that in a moment. For now, I'll break it down as follows. Raw combat types are fighters, assassins, and rangers. Tankers and healers are the raw non-combat types. Mages fall into the middle in that they have a ton of offense, but the ability to use barrier magic does offer some non-combat function for support. Now that we know where each of these six types of hunters are and where they fall into the category, let's take a more in-depth look into them each individually to look at the functionality of each of them as well as the glaring weaknesses that they have if they have any at all. Up first, we have mages who are my personal favorite group of hunters. Hunters who are mages are typically equipped with rings and staffs and spell books and magic lanterns. They have the ability to use elemental attack spells, barrier magic, summoning magic, and curse magic. Depending on the type of magic that a mage uses primarily, you get a more dangerous opponent to deal with. Like for instance, elemental spells are what most mages use. They can use all the elements like ice and water and fire, but amongst the mages who have the spell only the top tier are able to use lightning spells. So if you see a mage with lightning magic, you're in for a really tough fight because their skill level is pretty high to be able to use that type of spell at all. Now, summoning magic, on the other hand, allows the mages to summon creatures to assist them in battle, but it's worth noting that you can't summon a whole army of creatures to assist you because most mages are only capable of summoning one to two creatures before their mana hits its limit and they aren't able to summon anymore. While theoretically it's possible for someone to say summon 100 creatures to help them out, the amount of mana needed for something like that is absurdly high, which is why most mages can only summon one at best two creatures to help them out before their mana hits their limit. So say if it was a video game character, their energy bar will be depleted rather quickly in exchange for summoning the creatures. Now, curse magic, on the other hand, is a type of magic that, as the name implies, is a curse, but in the sense that it can either be used to restrain or directly place a negative impact on the performance of the person who the spell has been casted upon, which both makes it a handy set of magic if you're a mage in battle fighting a strong enemy, but it also makes for a headache if you're the one fighting the mage 
using this spell because you get nerfed to a degree. Now, barrier magic can be used to defend yourself or those around you from attacks and it can be used to trap your targets in a barrier to restrain the movements. The next type of hunter that we'll be covering will be healers. These hunters typically carry only a staff in their possession, but they but their use is more than just to patch up any wounds of anyone who's damaged like the name implies. They can obviously use healing magic, but they also can use buff magic as well. Healers serve in the support role and as a result, they rely on others to protect them in battle and dish out the hard hits. But in return, they can use buff magic to raise their stats and the stats of their teammates in exchange for being protected, making them arguably the most important members of the team because they raise the stats of others and they heal their injuries to allow them to keep fighting at a high level. Now, assassins, on the other hand, they're the ones who want all the smoke and, as you would expect, are the deadliest out of this group. They primarily fight only with daggers, but that's all they really need because of their specialty being close quarters combat and their insane combination of speed and agility. Typically speaking, assassins are considered to be the fastest out of all the hunters and it makes the most sense given agility and quick strike are part of their whole fighting style while in most cases you only see them with daggers you do see them at times deploy small hidden blades in combat their high speed movements make them a huge headache to deal with in a battle setting regardless of the class in particular mages they tend to have the most trouble with them and that's because for mages they take a lot of time to use their spells and in battle with someone such as this time isn't necessarily on your side also they have insane stealth skills that allow them to hide themselves physically and hide their magic Magical presence. Tankers typically can be found using shields and swords and, or staff. As you expect, they specialize in defense. Unlike healers who don't do too well in combat, tankers can hold their own in combat if push comes to shove. However, during a raid, their primary purpose, as you expect, is to serve the support role by offering a defensive support where needed. They are easily the most durable of all the types of hunters that you'll meet, and because of this, they can take the most damage compared to anyone else in their party, which makes them, after healers, the most important members of a party because they're tasked with serving as the shield that allows for those who specialize in combat like fighters to start dishing out the heavy damage. The other benefit to a tanker that they have is that when they taunt their enemy, oftentimes they can get them to start attacking without thinking, but this only applies to people who are weaker than the tankers themselves. Next, we have rangers who specialize in distance attacks using magic arrows to do most of the damage. Obviously, this means that you'll typically see them with bows when you get into combat with one of them. Rangers, after healers and tankers, are the most important because due to them usually being at a distance, they have the job of covering the blind spots of assassins and fighters by shooting down enemies in their blind spots during a raid. But the downside to someone like this is that they typically will have next to no real skill in close quarters combat settings which makes them vulnerable to anyone who can effectively close the distance between them then we have fighters fighters are the brawlers that you probably are the most in love with and i can't blame you they have a variety of different ways they can strike you down they use claws they use swords axes gauntlets fighters dish out heavy amounts of damage to their enemies and they specialize in melee combat due to wielding heavy objects like swords and axes their fighting style more often than not they have high stamina and defense when you get get to some of the S ranks like Bayek, they have unique abilities on top of their class that makes them more dangerous. Now, we'll close this out by clearing up the misconception that you may or may not have, which is that just because a person has magical powers, it doesn't mean that they themselves have to become a hunter. People only become hunters when they get their hunting license and participate in a dungeon raid. There are humans who have magic powers, but they themselves don't choose the career path and instead focus on living a normal civilian life. Now, if you're curious about all the different types of hunters that we have in this series you want to click on this video link on the screen and if that video has not been uploaded yet for every hunter in solo leveling i'll update the link on the screen once that video has been uploaded